Well, hello, this is Mark Allen here. Uh, I've been a little bit reticent to do this, but uh, wanted to share just a few things that I've enjoyed over the last uh, little while. Um, I got to say that even this morning when I was talking to my wife, I said to her, I said, I didn't feel in very good shape for being much of an encouragement this weekend. But you know, with uh, normally we'd be at conferences, usually our family would be in St. Thomas. And I'm really missing that. Um, love spending time with other believers and over the Word of God. And, and uh, so I'd just like to take a few moments this morning to share something that I've enjoyed recently in my personal reading. And uh, I hope that it can be an encouragement to you. Um, and please bear with me. I'm not very eloquent at these types of things. And uh, this is my first time doing this type of, of uh, um, podcast or whatever you want to call it. So... What I'd like to share actually first is, so a few weeks ago I was really enjoying um, the story that was spoken on by Bill Prost a couple weeks ago um, at Ornan's Threshing Floor. Uh, I had just been passing through that chapter in Chronicles in my personal reading and uh, when I got to that point where there was the plague and of course we're in the middle of this, or the pestilence I should say, we're in the middle of this uh, COVID-19 situation that we're in right now and I just I read those verses where the angel gets to Jerusalem at Ornan's threshing floor and uh, he stops and he puts the pause button on as Bill Pross said and and uh, David buys that threshing floor and uh, offers that burnt offering and uh, peace offering to the Lord and the and, and the uh, sickness is stopped. It just really impressed me what it must have meant to the heart of God to look at that place and realize that that's where, very close to where the Lord would be crucified, but also where he would be, where he would rise again. And uh, so it was just as I was continuing to read on in my personal reading a few um, a week or so later that I came across another passage, very, very applicable um, to the situation we're in. And again, I know this is directly related to Israel, not so much um, uh, the church in the same sense, but certainly the principles of it can be applied. And so the first verse I'd like to read is actually just a section of verses in Second Chronicles chapter 7, starting at verse 12. Um, this is the response to Solomon's prayer at the dedication of the temple. It was mentioned a couple weeks ago again by Bill Prost. Um, and it says there in verse 12, it says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. And again, these verses, the next verse is mentioned often. I've seen it on Facebook a number of times. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Just stop there. Well, um, what particularly impressed me as I read this is, um, I think I had seen it in a, in a Facebook post where it mentioned in verse 13, um, no rain, like Australia and the wildfires, um, locusts, like Africa is struggling with, and pestilence, what we're going through right now. And to me, there's no question that the Lord is speaking um, to all of us, to the world, um, to believers, to professing Christendom, again, as has been mentioned. Uh, and those three things are things that we've seen in just the past few months and in 2020. And uh, the next verse is the verse that I usually hear quoted, and it's, it's a cry that goes out often by believers with respect to um, the Lord coming and blessing the nation of the U.S. often any country. And again, in some respects, is misapplied. But the principles are incredibly important principles. And, and what struck me, again, is the things that are, are asked to be done there. It says, call by my name. Um, 
I know this is to Israel, but you know, we, we gather in the Lord's name. And uh, what they were to do was to humble themselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from their wicked ways. And he would hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, I know that's directly applicable to Israel, but you know, I, I realize the need for me to humble myself, to pray, to seek the Lord's face, and to deal with those things in my life that need dealing with. And you know, we're not necessarily promised earthly healing in the same way that Israel was, but we are looking forward to a future day. Um, where there will be perfection and uh, the Lord's appearing. I know Mark has spoken on that, uh, spoken on that a little while ago. I enjoyed his comments on it. And uh, interestingly enough, um, Solomon in the next few chapters is a picture of the Lord's earthly kingdom in a future day where we will see him rule this world. What an incredible time it will be. Well, these verses just really touched me as, as just things that we need to be burdened about. And uh, particularly in light of the direct relevance of verse 13. And I know again that this is to Israel, but um, certainly speaks to my heart. And it says, uh, the other thing that I noted here was the place. And this is where it's sort of connected with the prior, um, prior uh, verses that I had read. It says, now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place and you know I I uh, just jotted a few notes down on the place in God's heart was what I I uh, cop just made notes on is the place in God's heart and you know I'm not going to turn to well I'll turn to a few of these verses but uh, this place where Solomon had dedicated the temple was a place that was special in God's heart you know it goes back to Genesis 22. Let's turn to it quickly because I'm going to try and get this done in 15 minutes. It's going to be difficult. But uh, Genesis 22, um, verse 2 to 4 and verse 9. And notice that it specifically mentions the place. And I can just imagine God looking down and contemplating what would happen to his son there. Um, this is Good Friday and how special that place was in his heart. So just read Genesis 22, verse 2 to 4. It says, He said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tell thee of. And Abraham arose early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took the two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son enclaved the wood for a burnt offering. And rose up and went to the place which the Lord had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And then if you go down um, to verse 9, it says, When they came to the place which God had told him of, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar of wood. I don't pretend in its holy ground, I guess, to even think about what went through God's heart as he saw Abraham with his only son who he loved, the fulfillment of promise, and he's asking him to offer him as a burnt sacrifice. That place, not only at that time, but looking forward to a future day where the Lord Jesus would be crucified. Um, had such a place of meaning in God's heart. And you know, if we move over, let's just go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 12, just very quickly. Um, the Lord wanted to dwell with the children of Israel. If you go to Deuteronomy 12 and verse 11, it says there, Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and your heave offering of the Lord. Oh, sorry, offering at your hand and all your choice vows which you vow to the Lord. In this chapter, of course, um, this place that was going to be in the land 
of Israel, um, chosen by God, where his name um, would be, was a very special place. And you know, it was he wanted to dwell among that tabernacle. He gives it a direction for it, but it, it looks forward to a future day um, when a temple would be built and to an even future day when the Lord would die in Calvary's cross and uh, even further on to a day when the Lord will appear in power and glory and set up his kingdom there. Um, so let's just go on to First Chronicles chapter 21 and I'd like to touch on a few verses there. First Chronicles I'm sorry to turn to so many verses. I'm just trying to make the connection here. Now this is, David has um, established his, his uh, capital city, if you want to call it, in Jerusalem. Um, Joab goes up and conquers it. I don't think David had any real sense of, of what was special about that place, but uh, there's this plague of pestilence that comes because Satan had provoked David to number Israel because Israel hadn't been following him. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm just going to read it. Just notice what happens when the angel gets to this place and the Lord sees it. Um, I'll just start at uh, verse 14. Uh, I've alluded to this before. So the Lord sent pestilence on Israel, and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld. And he repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed, it is enough. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And uh, down in verse 22, notice the reference to the place. Again, it says there, Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. And thou shalt grant it me for the full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And uh, down in verse 26, it says, And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Well, here at this place, um, the, Lord, the, the Lord sees and the angel stops. And David is asked to um, offer burnt offerings there, and the plague is stopped because of those burnt offerings. What I want to refer to here is that was a special place in God's heart. In that burnt offering, there was sin around, but he saw his perfect son, and that was the place where he would be crucified. And in that city, he would rise again, and, and that's where... The kingdom will be for a thousand years. And, and uh, you know, that, that place had a very special place in God's heart. Well, um, the plague ends. And, of course, that's what we're, we're all looking for. One of the big things right now that is all over the news is when is this going to be over? And, and none of us know that answer. We just know that it's in God's hands. And uh, um, we need to consider that. Well... Just to make the connection between the two spots, and I've, I've mentioned this before, and, and I, don't, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but when Solomon builds a temple, um, it says in Second Chronicles 3, verse 1, uh, Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah. It would be in the area where Abraham took his son Isaac that we read first. Where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place... That David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. In that place, um, he begins to build the temple. That place at a very special place in uh, God's heart. You know, uh, if you go to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, you can actually, it's, it's within eyesight um, or within a kilometer, I don't know the exact distance. 
where um, either site um, of the crucifixion is supposed to be, and I know we don't know exactly, but uh, what God, what went in his heart when he looked down at that place is, is beyond comprehension. Well, if we just go on to Second Chronicles, and again, I, I see my time is, is up here, Second Chronicles 7, um, those verses that I read, um, and how it struck me, the relevance for today, um, those three things that we've seen recently, and those verses that, or, or that I've seen quoted, and I know again they're not directly applicable to us, but no rain, locusts, pestilence, and the response that should be in their hearts. And uh, this was God's answer to Solomon's prayer um, that uh, Solomon recognized that, uh, that there would be failure. And he, he asked, and this is the Lord's answer, and it's connected with that place. That's the Lord's answer. And uh, what I just want to note, if you go down to verse 16, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 16, three things associated with that place. It's just beautiful. It says, Now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. His name would be there. One, and mine eyes, his eyes would be there. And mine heart shall be there perpetually. Well, um... I don't know how we lose sight of the value of where the Lord puts his name. And I speak that for myself. Um, we, we become unsensitive to where his heart is and his eyes. But I just, considering this here, Solomon, the Lord's answering his prayer, this dedication of one of the most beautiful buildings ever ever built. And it was where God would dwell. And, and uh, we see the cloud come down and... And the amazing um, circumstances surrounding this. And just to see the Lord's response to Solomon here. And, and later on in the chapter, and I just want to mention this briefly. It struck me. It's, it, it hit my heart as to why the Lord would cause these things. No rain, no the locusts and pestilence to come on Israel. Go down to verse 22. It says... Actually, end of verse 21, um, 2 Chronicles 7, 21, it says, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, laid hold on their gods, worshipped them, and served them. Therefore he hath brought all this evil up upon them. Again, I know this is applicable to Israel, not necessarily us, um, but Egypt is a picture of the world, and I openly acknowledge that my own heart very easily gets attracted to this earth, and uh, the effects of that can be devastating. Um, it says it, it laid hold on other gods. You know, it's, it's easy to lay hold on the things of this world. Um, I think of how often I agonize over wanting to fix things in my house and maybe it's get a new vehicle or whatever it may be. How easily our hearts are sucked into getting occupied with to lay, want to lay hold on these things and, and it says to worship them. You know, you know, sometimes one of the biggest things that condemns me is where my affections are. What brings a smile to my face? What brings joy to my heart? Is it the Lord or is it the, the things of this world? And, and then finally it says, and serve them. And, uh, you know, our time shows what we serve. And I say these things entirely um, to convict my own soul. But I just noticed that in Second Chronicles and why the Lord allowed this. But how beautiful to see his promise to hear their prayer. And we see people like Daniel who availed himself um, of this, this pro promise and the blessings that came from that um, later on. Well, again, I, I don't want, I, I don't have um, too much time here, but I just, going forward, you know, it's not a place for us. It's a person. And, you know, the Lord himself wasn't revealed in the same way until we get to Matthew and, and uh, 
the Lord is presented in the gospel so incredibly in each one just to show who his son is. And the focus no longer is a place where they're to worship the Lord. It's a person. And uh, I just want to read one verse. In, well, a verse we all know, Matthew 18, 20. And it's easy to be, maybe have some hard feelings in our hearts just knowing um the meaning at the same time it's a beautiful verse and, and Matthew 18 20 it says uh, there where two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst of them yeah, there there am I in the midst of them and you know the person of the Lord Jesus is revealed he is that Passover lamb he Go, dies at Calvary's cross in Jerusalem and he rises again the third day and uh, it's beautiful to see I'm not going to turn to the verses but it specifically mentions the place called Calvary and uh, near that place there was a garden and that's where he rose and that's where we're going to enjoy this weekend and in a future day the Lord it, well, any day he's going to give the shout and call us home, but he will come in power and glory and set up his kingdom there for a thousand years and he'll be given his rightful place. And then for all eternity, we'll enjoy his person and his presence. Actually, I'll just read one more verse in the eternal state, because this isn't something that ends. It goes through all of the dispensations. Revelation chapter 21, um, verse, sorry. 21 verse 3 it says and I heard a great voice of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God later on we know it says they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads well just a few meditation or thoughts that have come just in my personal reading and they do convict me and you know it's been a little bit crazy having seven people cooped up in one house the five kids all trying to homeschool or homeschool and university and, and uh, um, working most of the time from home not all the time from home and it brings out the flesh but you know as I read these things it brings incredible encouragement to my heart and I I realize that that any day the lord could give the shout and i need to just think about that day when he'll be his appearing that we can look for and that when we'll be with him for all eternity well i this is way over um but uh just a few thoughts that i wanted to share with you today